So you want to be a samurai, do you? I'm going to show you how to get this gold brand katana in Skyrim Anniversary Edition. You can buy this separately if you've got the special edition and it should still be there in the store now. This is just a heads up of what to expect when you go for this quest. It does a huge amount of fire damage. It is quite hard to get this. I would recommend you at least level 40, a good medium or heavy set of armor and definitely you need to have a lot of health or some really strong healing spells. It's a nice little sword though, I really like it. So first off, we're going to be going east of Windhelm to the Solerum of Boifa, which is a cultist area. You'll speak to some of the cultists and they're not too interested in you as you watch someone get slain. Approach the body and you will get the Matter of Pride quest starting. It tasks you with going to a fallen warrior's resting place and you'll be going back and forth between Whiterun and the Winterhold College too. But first to the tomb, which is again just north of Windhelm. You can see it here, a few locations that you might be able to teleport close to it. Otherwise, you'll have to find it in the mountains. There's quite a few trolls around this zone, so be careful as it will be quite hard. But here is Sidher's Respite. Inside, you're going to find lots of the cultists who aren't too happy that you're trying to break into the tomb. These guys weren't the hardest. They certainly will be the easiest creatures you'll come across in this little quest. We're going to be going up against some proper tough draugers in a little while. So when you get to the doorway, basically you've got to find two items to put on these pedestals before it'll open up the doorway. Obviously collect all the junk and all the rest of it. I'm breezing through all the collectibles, it's up to you to explore and grab all the items if you really want them. I'm just focusing on the main bits. And now it tells you to go to the Winterhold College to look up some research notes. Now unless you live under a rock, you should know where Winterhold College is. It's one of the main cities and where you go and learn magic if you're brand new to Skyrim somehow. But for older players, you should be able to find it on one of the floors. Be warned you'll be attacked instantly by some of the occultists, so make sure you've got the right armour and some healing. Don't go in this unprepared. These two were pretty tough and the way they materialised was quite challenging. Once they're taken out, we can now go and get the first item. Gotta love a kill cam. So now we need to fast travel back over to White Rum. Use the Dragon's Reach marker to teleport quicker. You'll come across this snotty nosed kid and you can decide to bar with him or intimidate or persuade him to give you a amulet. Go get yourself some sweets kid. So I went back to the tomb and placed this but I'm pretty sure you could if you know the location go straight to the second location and open it up. You can see the doors nearly open, we just need that next item which is going to be a skull from an extremely powerful wizard. So just east of the big large mountain in the middle you've got Shroud Hearth Barrow and that's where we're going to be going now. This is where it starts to get really challenging and we're going to come across some pretty OP Draugars. As with all barrows it does look like there's other reasons to be here as well and this ghost I do believe is part of that. You will need I do believe a sapphire claw if you want to explore this fully but I was really just after this sword. There's lots of traps in here too including this one that activates when you pull this lever so don't pull that lever. You've then got three different levers and you basically got to activate the door across the way from you. So pulling that first lever shuts the door, pulling this lever opens both doors at once and that should be your way through. I don't know why I was messing around with it but you can see I made a mistake there. You will also need to use these levers on your escape route out unless you have got the sapphire claw. There's a few corridors to go down, one of them has got this apprentice locked door. There's not much in here other than a draugr and just a few bits of gold so I wouldn't even bother. As you can see it's still filled with lots of traps as well. Literally nothing but gold and pain. Eventually you're going to come to a gate that needs to be activated with the chain and then this will open up the next little encounter with a ghostly spectral enemy who is again pretty tough. So these guides are meant to give you a heads up, they're not meant to show you every single beat and how to defeat every single enemy, it's more just to showcase the brand new quests. So forgive me when I start using a cheaty sword because I died a bunch of times actually trying to take these guys on, that's why I'm telling you it's pretty tough. Old Wind here wasn't as much of a problem eventually. I actually took him out for quickness because I died to this guy first and he was pretty immensely tough. Also died about three or four times in a second so I'm going to show you that as well. But just to make you really aware of what to expect and what kind of weapons and armor you're going to need 
you can see I've probably got about 130 health not the greatest amount so probably my own fault especially considering I wasn't wearing that much great gear so I went at him with the cheaty knife and I took him out in one shot you may not like it but as I said it's not a full-blown guide it's just to give you a heads up what to expect with the quest and to show you how to get the actual katana yourself pick up his skull and now we've got to return back to Sivda's tomb of course, if you've got the Sapphire Claw, you can activate and go through. I'm sure there'll be even more of this burrow to explore or get some rewards. So back to the tomb, as I said, place the skull on the pedestal and it will open up the doorway. Inside, you're going to find Draugr Scourge and there's a good few of these. And you can see fire damage with this spell wasn't doing much at all. So take care of this guy and then we've got another doorway to go through and a few more of these. There's actually two ways you can go. You've got these doorways here that'll lead to the main thing. Then you've got this side offshoot as well, which activates another Draugr that's going to come around the corner. Although he does take quite a bit of time. So I went through the other doorway and I got roasted alive. So again, pay attention to all of the traps in here. Turn around and here we go again with another one of these guys. I had switched back to a normal weapon because I was trying to kind of do this semi-legit. It was only just for quickness with this guide that I was really demonstrating as a showcase. There's actually a whole bunch of different potions and poisons that you'll find actually going down this way, so it's definitely worth it. You'll also come across a spell tome, the Stone Flesh. So go back all the way the other way through the doors that were on flame, and again, we're going to be going up against another Draugr White. He was a little bit easier to take care of. I'm using the Ice Blade of the Monarch, which I've shown you guys how to get already in another video. And then you should be able to go through the door and finally get the gold brand katana. As soon as you pick it up though, you're going to be attacked by two powerful draugers. I honestly died to them about three times as I just was kind of not taking it seriously enough. So I can't wait to dive back into Skyrim when I start doing my 100 day survival and do this all a little bit more legit. Even on the easy difficulties, it was still a challenge. The third time lucky, I finally took them out and finished them off. Notice I already switched to the katana as well, and as I said, it does 30 fire damage. With enemies taking even more damage while they're on fire, so it's a pretty decent one. But wait, before you click off, there are still some dangers. As you're trying to make your escape, you will be attacked by even more Draugr. A hulking Draugr, he was pretty tough, and you've got another white just behind you as well. And there we go, that's how you get the gold brand katana one of the new additions with the anniversary DLC pack. Remember, you will not be able to get this unless you've upgraded your special edition to the anniversary or you've gone and bought this separately on the Creation Club. Check out the rest of my guides. I'm going to be doing every single brand new quest and I'll be taking a look at survival mode 100 days very soon. Laters.